Hi folks, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. This is a channel dedicated to Model 3 owners, would-be owners, Model Y owners, getting to know your car better, getting to know sometimes the hidden under the hood secrets. Now, there are two words that terrify Tesla owners. I was gonna say Model 3 owners, but this is broader than just Model 3, it's all Tesla owners. There are also two words you will not find in your owner's manual. And yet, they are two words that are used throughout the world when Tesla owners get together to chat about their experiences. What are those two words? Phantom drain. If you haven't heard of that, you might have heard of vampire drain. And if you haven't heard of that, you've probably heard the term battery drain. What we're talking about here is what happens to your car when it's parked, not when you're driving. When you're parked and you're not doing anything with it, and yet the battery still seems to drain. Battery leakage, if you wish. But the term that most people use is phantom drain, and that's the way that I'm gonna refer to it right now. Now, this is called a dozen reasons for phantom drain. And I think that, yeah, there may be one or two others. And if you can think of anything I have not got on this list here, there, uh, please go down into the comment section and add yours. Or if you found that you've discovered a way of reducing phantom drain dramatically, why don't you go into the comment section and share it with all of us? Because everyone would love to know how not to lose the current or the charge or the range from our batteries. I'm gonna go through pretty quickly. I don't want this to be a long drawn out episode. I wanna get it finished by this afternoon and uploaded tonight. So here are the 12 most common reasons for phantom drain. Number one, and this is the biggie, leaving sentry mode on. Now there's nothing bad about sentry mode. In fact, sentry mode is the mode that allows you to see if bad people come to your car, do bad things, and get their license plate, or get their face, or get the record of what they've done. So sentry mode is good. It doesn't have to be on all the time. So if you go into your settings in the car, you can discover it there and turn sentry mode off or on. You can also determine that you don't want it to work at home or at work or for favorite locations. But basically, we would turn sentry mode on if our car is unguarded and it's exposed to the public. The easiest way to turn it off is this little icon on the top of your screen, tap it, and it's off. Easy as that. So how much does it drain? Well, think about this. It's pretty much capturing through cameras around your car and writing to your USB drive all the time that there's activity. So whenever there are people, whenever they walk close by, it is working. That's going to reduce the charge from your battery. So that's number one. Number two. One of the things that your main battery does is to keep your 12 volt auxiliary battery charged. So if it should drop below 50%, you can bet that your main battery is gonna charge your auxiliary battery. So our 12 volt battery, still needed, still used, and it gets charged from the main battery. That's reason number two for phantom drain. Reason number three. We have a feature called overheat protection in our cars. I make use of it here. I really do not want my cabin to get over 40 degrees and to get super hot. It's not good for the touch screen. It's not good for the components in your car. So I typically turn overheating protection on. I know it's Vancouver. Mostly we have rain, but from time to time, we do have very hot summers. So is that gonna use up your battery? Well, of course it is. It's gonna turn on the fan. It's gonna turn on the air con. It's going to use battery power while you're parked and not even near your vehicle. Number four, here's a very controversial one. Every time we connect our car, every time I wake up Red Dragon, either on my Tesla official app or on the Tesla stats app that I just reviewed last week and I love so much. By the way, we're gonna do a follow up on that Tesla stats app uh, with Ramin, the author of the app and he's kindly agreed to come on to a Zoom call with me after I've had a bit of time getting to use it and to ask him some questions about 
what's not in, what's in, what are his plans for the future, and perhaps any questions that you guys put in the comment section, I will add them to my list of what I'd like to chat to him about. So all of the apps, do not set them to be in constant contact with your car. Do not set them to ping your car every 15 minutes. Many apps have a feature where you can say regularly ping or connect with the car. Not a good idea. When you want to know something in your car, tap on the app and say connect. Whether it's in the widget or it's in the app, you can do that. So the more uncontrolled Tesla apps you have on your phone, and the more that all of them go independently and contact your car, the more phantom drain will affect you and your car. And by the way, that also includes everything you do to your car. So if I connect to the car, and I look at the state of the battery, if I then choose to vent the windows, honk the horn, flash the lights, uh, summon my car to me, all of those things are going to affect how much power is used from the battery. So connecting to your car, performing activities remotely, all of those will add to the drain. Number five, your car periodically will undergo a self-diagnosis, a self-analysis of all of the systems in the car. That's to determine if anything is happening, anything that should not be happening. So left to its own devices, the car will still interrogate all of the subsystems to make sure that nothing bad is happening or that you haven't left the door open or the trunk open or something like that. So that's independent. You have to know that it is a good thing for you because that's how the car knows that it's in healthy condition the next time you want to take it out on the road. Having Bluetooth on in your phone and having Bluetooth connected to your car also means that even if you're not driving the car, if it's, let's say, parked in your garage, and you're working around your car, you're working in the vicinity, and of course, as we always do, we have our phone in our pocket or phone in our hand. So if that's happening, it's contacting your car as you walk past the car, as you get close to the door, it's unlocking it. So you may want to turn Bluetooth off just while you're in constant close proximity to the car, while the car is parked. That will also save some of the car's battery because there won't be that constant making and breaking of a connection. Now, number seven, when you leave your car, you get out of your car, you go downtown, you park somewhere, you get out of the car, there are some options. You can leave the climate control on. You can also put it in dog mode if you're leaving your dog in the car or camp mode if you're out camping and you're not even plugged into any power. We can still cause the climate control to be active while we're out of the car. If, for example, you're out for a short while, it's very hot, you'd like to keep the car cool at the temperature it is, you would turn climate control on and that would drain battery still further while you're parked downtown or wherever you happen to be parked. Now there's another one that I, I think it makes sense to me. I read it in a lot of the forums and that is if you've been driving your car and the battery temperature is nicely warm and you go to park it at your work, if it's a particularly cold day, what's going to happen is the battery's going to cool down and that's going to report to the car less range, less charge in the battery, but it's due to severely reduced temperature. Um, it makes logical sense to me. If I've got it wrong, please let me know in the comments below. But I think that if you've been driving the car and it's heated, the battery will show a certain range. When it cools down and the weather chills the battery, it's probably going to show less of a range. Because remember, range is partly an estimate. It's also determined by external conditions, environmental conditions, and your style of driving. Number nine, preconditioning your car. We have a setting that allows us to precondition the car. What does that mean? Well, it means that if I'm heading out on a long journey and I want to leave at, let's say, 6 a.m., I can set it to precondition for a departure of 6 a.m. And what that will do is it will cause the car to warm up the battery, warm up the interior, and get prepared for that trip. Now, one way of avoiding battery drain there is to leave the car plugged in so it uses power from your electricity. It doesn't use battery power. But if the car is not plugged in, what's it going to do? It has to use some of that battery charge to precondition itself and to get the car ready. There's another feature. It's called Summons Standby. 
So you can set summons to be on permanent standby so that when you pick up your phone and you summon the car, let's say across the parking lot, it'll immediately be ready for you. It'll be alert, keep connected, and it will come to you as you, as you ask for it. However, why would we do that? It doesn't take more than half a minute or so just to wake the car up, make a connection, and then go into the summon feature. So leaving summon on standby, not recommended, certainly adds to your phantom drain. Number 11, one I hadn't thought of, but one of the readers found to his chagrin that if he leaves a USB device connected, for example, he'd purchased, I think it was a Logitech game controller that he'd been recommended to buy for his Model 3, but he left it plugged in to the USB port, and the next morning there was considerable phantom drain, way over what he would normally experience. So leaving USB devices connected to USB ports, other than your dash cam flash drive or SSD, is going to significantly cause phantom drain. It might even be, and I don't know this for certain, that the SSD drive or the flash drive that we use for dash cam and sentry mode recordings, because it's plugged into the USB all the time, it may also cause the car to just pole it for activity from time to time. If you know the answer to that, if you happen to work at Tesla or you're uh, more technically minded, uh, drop us a note in the comments. I'd love to know if that's true. It certainly was true for the game controller. It may be true for other connected devices. And number 12, if you're really desperate and you don't, for example, want anything from your dash cam, you could unplug your flash drive or your SSD drive, in which case the dash cam would become inactive because it would have nowhere to write captured video to. So if you're really looking to try and minimize every bit of loss, that's another one that you could try. Folks, there are 12 contributors to this vampire drain, phantom drain, battery drain. Let me end like this. For most people, myself included, who really cares? If you're on a trip, there's not gonna be any phantom drain because you're actually driving the car. Yeah, there are things that happen while you drive that will drain it faster, like a heavy foot on the pedal, like full-on aircon or heating, all these things will contribute, but I'm talking about phantom drain. So what if overnight you've lost several kilometers or several miles of range? We can charge the battery again if we're going on a long trip, and if you're not going on a long trip, you certainly still have plenty of range to cover wherever you want to go to. I, I know that some people make it almost um, an obsession. They have to find every element contributing to phantom drain. They have to prevent it. Why? It's also a good thing for a lithium ion battery to slowly deplete over time. And remember, all of these 12 things that I've talked about, among them are many useful and many valuable activities. Just connecting with your car to see how things are doing and, and get information, that's not a bad thing. If the price we pay is a few reduced miles of range each day, as far as I'm concerned, who cares? It really does not matter at all. So there they are, 12 contributing factors toward battery drain. Make of them what you will, turn off or on as you personally desire. Above all, don't obsess about the loss of range, just charge the car again. Tesla does recommend leaving the car plugged in, leaving it charged, and then if you have overheating protection or preconditioning, it's all done through the electrical current and not from the battery itself. So listen guys, June the 7th is nearly here, and you know what that means. It is the announcement of WWDC, Apple, and I believe that the 16-inch MacBook Pro is going to be announced. I will be ready to place my order immediately. Most of you know that PayPal donations on my channel are going straight to that fund. These little things are not cheap, but it is something I need to give me the flexibility to edit on the road. We're going to be going on a cross Canada tour in the next year, and we're going down to the States and going to go from state to state. I need to have a portable computer with me, and that 16-inch MacBook Pro with the new Apple M1X chip 
is what I'm saving for. So any donations to the PayPal link, I am very grateful for. I thank you for your support of the channel and we want to go on to the next Tesla app in the next episode. I just took a break because this was something that people were sending me a lot of questions on and I felt it would be useful to you. So thanks again and cheers for now. We'll see you again in the next episode.